Hey everybody, this is Tim Hart, branch manager of Van Dyke Mortgage right here in sunny Fort Myers, Florida. <laughs> so here with uh, our final episode, Pamela Paulson from Home Loans Woo! Assist. This is episode six, you believe it? I can't believe it, time flies when you're having fun, Tim. I know, what are you gonna do now? You're just gonna, <laughs> nothing to do. I'm gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna brainstorm more topics so we can keep this thing going. <laughs> yes, yeah, I like it. So Pamela, this is going to be episode six. We've done a, um, you know, five before it, um, all about credit scores, uh, you know, the best things to do. You guys go back and check all five of those episodes out if you are interested in credit scoring. Um, Pamela from Home Loans Assist, she is a company that we refer people to when we can't advise them enough on what they need to do to fix their credit. We refer them over to Pamela. And then Pamela does her thing. So Pamela, let them know uh, out there what you guys do. Okay, Home Loans Assist. We are mortgage-based credit education and restoration. We work on the consumer's behalf to correct and delete all the errors and erroneous information, negatively reporting on consumers' credit reports to get them the biggest boost in their score. So we're coaching them on their positive credit uh, while we attack and go after the negative. And just the whole goal is to get them uh, back to you, Tim, the loan officer, so you can get them approved for a home loan. And no home loan, yep. You guys out there, if you're listening to this uh, and your credit stinks, don't think it's the end of the world. I mean, a lot of people's credit stinks. And so it'll stink forever if you don't work on it and be proactive with yeah. it. And that's what this whole video series was about, Pamela. So um, let's go ahead and get to the last topic, what we want to talk about which is what are the biggest mistakes that people make with their credit? Also, at the end, Pamela, sneak attack, we're gonna stay positive, okay? And wanna hear a few things on the best practices for their credit. You ready to roll? Ready to roll, let's do this. All right, cool. So the biggest, biggest mistakes, Tim, the consumers make with their credit is first and foremost, ignoring their credit report. So we always recommend that the consumer check their credit report regularly. Obviously doing so allows them to identify any type of problems or errors. They can correct anything that isn't accurate. They can even uh, spot signs of identity theft. Any account or application that they don't recognize has to be addressed. So the first thing, regularly check the, their credit report. Right, and, and you um, recommend them going to all three bureaus to do that? Yeah, um, the annualcreditreport.com, that's through the bureaus, they get one, consumers can get one credit report free per year, so okay. why wouldn't you? And, and we talked previously in another uh, video about online sites such as Credit Karma, certainly you can monitor your credit report through those sites as well. Okay. Mistake number two, uh, sometimes consumers think no debt means good credit, and that's so far from the truth. You know, Tim, lenders check credit to see whether the borrower can be counted on to repay back money that they borrow. Mm -hmm. So if the consumer never borrows money, uh, lenders have nothing to go on. Therefore, it's important that consumers demonstrate they can be trusted with paying back the money they borrow. Um, so oftentimes, um, consumers can be shocked when they're turned down for a home or a car or other loans because they have no credit history established whatsoever. Yeah, and so a lot of times we have to explain this one a lot, and it, it's kind of sad to me. I get the young, you know, a person coming out of college or, you know, just entering the workforce, but the people I feel really bad about are the people in their 40s or 50s, even 60s that have paid cash for everything their whole life, right? Like mm -hmm. they've done the good thing and, and never overextend themselves and they've just used cash for everything. And I, I appreciate right. it. It's weird because like I appreciate it so much, you know, that they're that responsible, that they never needed debt. And at the same time though, I've got to explain to them that lenders, we look at you in the past, like what you did in the past, how you paid everything in the past to try to predict the future. And so, when we can't see the past or what they've done, granted it's nothing, they've done nothing wrong, lenders don't wanna take the risk because they don't know if this person can pay back their bills because they've never proved it. So that's where, exactly. that's 22 and it, 
It's just a fact of life. If you're going to want a mortgage down the road or a vehicle loan, you need to start establishing credit. That's it. Perfect. Well said. Um, mistake number three, paying late or not at all. We know credit scoring models have a lot of different moving parts. But the one thing that consumers need to know, the biggest factor in almost every credit score is the payment history. So a late payment, a missed payment on the credit report counts against you. If we all know life happens. So if uh, somebody gets in the situation where they cannot pay a bill that month, it's imperative that they contact the creditor, let them know, hey, here's my situation. I'm going to be paying late. Oftentimes, if you contact and have that communication with your creditor, they're more forgiving than you realize. Yeah. And so uh, one thing, Pamela, to help with solutions for that is anyone listening uh, set yourself up for automatic bill pay. Um, that'll yeah. save you a lot of problems. Now, not having the money is one thing, but like a lot of times late pays happen. Oh my God, I forgot. Or, you know, the payment due on the 15th gets there on the 16th, you know, because they mailed it a certain time, automatic bill pay and be done with it. Absolutely. Great suggestion. All Mistake right. number four, maxing out credit cards. We've talked about this a uh, couple times. A big part of the credit score is what we call utilization ratio or credit usage. That's the calculation of how much your available credit that you're using. So the lower the ratio, the better. Even if you're making payments on time, having a high balance or high ratio to limit is a, is a big red flag. Right. And so for us in the mortgage world, what we see is when people come to me and every time I got to address this saying, Hey, your balances are close to your limits. I've gotten back the response sometimes of, well, I thought that was a good thing. And they were intentionally, <laughs> intentionally carrying high balances to prove that they could make the monthly payments. You know, like they were, you know, it's like uh, I was lifting more weights, showing you I could max out, showing you my max strength. And, it's not like that at all. It actually shows a lender and a creditor is that you're teetering on being overdrawn. You're teetering on being financially out of control. And so that's where, you know, we got to explain that as well. You got to pay down those debts. You got it. Mistake number five, closing unused credit cards. I don't know how many times that I encounter, um, having a conversation with the client and they just went and closed all these credit cards that they've had established for years and the credit score drops. So before you get um, antsy to start closing any credit cards that you haven't used in quite some time, do not do that. It will lower the credit score. You don't have to use credit cards every single month. You can rotate them. Just put a tank of gas, make a small purchase, pay it off on time, your credit score is going to jump. Yep. And you, you advised in an early video, earlier video to just carry, you know, show the activity and carry a very, very small balance so it hits the next month, right? Exactly. And we certainly, any unused credit card, um, companies can close those at any time without notifying the consumer. So just monitor which cards are open. Uh, and if there's no activity, just use them occasionally just to keep them open so you don't run into that uh, that situation where the, the company will close that credit card unbeknownst to you. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Moving on. Mistake number six that we um, encounter frequently is getting cash advances. Cash advances on credit cards usually incur a higher interest rate than purchases. They come with transaction fees and typically they have no grace period. So interest on the money usually starts adding up immediately. So, we would advise consumers if they get into that, that you know, um, situation where they need cash fast, it's probably cheaper to simply use the card to directly pay whatever expense they need, um, but really try to stay away from getting cash advances. Gotcha. Okay. And then um, mistake number seven, applying for credit at the wrong time. And I know you see this, Tim, I do. When, you, when consumers apply for a credit account, the inquiry on the credit uh, or that the lender makes will show on the credit report and it will definitely negatively impact your credit score. Credit applications 
uh, suggests that new debt may soon be showing up on the credit report so they can affect whether you're approved for the loan. Um, if, if we tell consumers, if they're gonna be in the market for a home loan, car loan, or other big time credit deal in the, the near future, we suggest to hold off on applying for new credit cards and other credit accounts at least for a few months beforehand. Okay, so, but if someone's going to uh, obtain a mortgage, right, and they come to me and they say, I wanna apply for a loan to get pre-approved, but I don't want to, um, I, I don't want my credit pulled because I don't want the score to drop, right? Mm -hmm. Um, me personally, I say, well, you're never going to know what you qualify for. And professionally, I'm guessing, you know, you, you have, you have me, the loan officer guessing at what will be probably the biggest purchase of your life. And so sure. how do they get, how do they, you know, get over that with, oh, well, I don't want to put my credit because the score will go down and they're at a 620 and they, they think maybe it'll drop below. 620 after I pulled the score. Right, right. So for certain types of loans, obviously, they're going to have to get that hard pull. So this is kind of where we can talk about soft inquiries versus hard inquiries. Um, lenders for a home mortgage, credit cards, it's, it's, they're going to have to get that hard pull done. Right. So, but what we like the consumers is at least go into it with either knowledge or education. Lenders may use soft inquiries to pre-approve for a credit card or a loan. So it's a pre-approval. Since they're, they're not making the lending decision or guaranteeing approval, they're only saying, well, you're likely to be approved for that credit card or that loan. So these inquiries, inquiries are typically considered promotional and won't affect the score. They're soft inquiries. A hard inquiry is an inquiry that occurs when a prospective lender checks the consumer credit report to make a lending decision. And so those hard inquiries will slightly lower the credit score, three to five points, um, and will typically stay on the credit report for up to two years, but again, not negatively impacting the score after that first year. Um, but unfortunately, Tim, there are some gray areas where either a hard or soft inquiry could occur. Um, Sometimes when banks need to verify a person's identity or a consumer applies for a rent, to, like to rent an apartment or a car, mm -hmm. if the consumer is worried about a growing number of hard inquiries on the report, all they have to do is ask the financial institution or company what type of inquiry they will make before deciding whether the consumer wants to proceed or not. So if they determine it will be a hard pull or hard inquiry, the consumer certainly can say, you know, I, I don't want you to pull my credit at this time, and they won't, just to avoid any um, potentially unpleasant credit surprises. I got you. I got you. What about the, um, what about the person that goes to get a car? Um, they drive up and down. I mean, here's US 41. Um, here at Fort Myers and they hit like six car lots or they go to one car lot and that car lot pulls their credit like nine times. Yes. So again, they, they just will um, shotgun out the consumer information to get that financing. That is one of the biggest nightmares we see with all the inquiries. You know, we've seen over 30 inquiries from uh, car shopping and the good news is that a consumer can certainly contact all those companies and say they never gave consent for them to do a hard pull or pull their credit. And oftentimes, uh, these companies will remove the inquiry. It takes a lot of work, obviously, depending on how many inquiries hit the credit report, all those phone calls you have to make. But cre uh, car dealerships are notorious for doing that. So please be beware. <laughs> When yes, going so car shopping. Basically, when they apply for a car loan, ask the person how many people are going to pull my credit, and they, they've got to tell them. Right. So when I, I just recently, probably six months ago, got a new car, I was financed. I knew the financing company got everything set up before I walked into that dealership. So I knew what I was approved for. They didn't have to send out my information to look for somebody who was willing to um, finance my vehicle. 
that's the smart way to do it. If you have time, definitely do your research up front. Right, I got gotcha. you. Um, all right, what else you got? Um, so in a nutshell, just to wrap it up again, it's the FICO fundamentals, three things, very basic, but so powerful and impactful when talking about a person's credit score. The first thing, pay your bills on time. Very simple. The second thing, keep your balances, your credit card balances, relatively low in relation to the available limit that you have. And the third thing, just don't open too many new accounts too rapidly. And if you just remember those three basic FICO fundamentals, you're going to be in great shape. Yeah, awesome. Well, Pamela, awesome information. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I really do appreciate you being with me um, you know, for all six of these episodes. Hopefully, um, everyone out there appreciated the information. And, and this was kind of a deep dive. Um, believe it or not, there's still more to do with credit, right, that we probably didn't cover. So uh, I'm sure you'll be back in the future to discuss other things. And so appreciate you being with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, good job. How, how can uh, people out there contact you if they need your so, support? Yep, my personal cell. Uh, feel free to use that to, to call or text me at 303-746-4655. So you guys... Um, hope you enjoyed this. Please make sure you like, share, and subscribe on, you know, wherever you're watching this, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, you name it. Uh, really appreciate you. Hopefully this help you, helps you guys out. Remember, I do mortgages for a living. Um, that's what we did this for. So in case you guys are out there, you currently rent your home, and you are on the fence about applying, maybe credit's a concern, maybe it's not. If it is a concern, make sure you reach out to me. I mean, the worst thing is I'm going to say no, not right now, but I'm going to coach you on what you need to do to get ready. And guys, it could possibly be, you know, something as easy as paying down a Walmart card, you know, down to, you know, 20 bucks instead of a hundred. And we can have that credit score up in no time, three to five business days at times I've seen happen guys where they go from being denied to being approved just for doing a few quick things on their credit. So Either way, get the ball rolling. Let me know if I can help. Hope you enjoyed this. Please like, share, and subscribe it with anyone else that you may know that you know, wants to buy a house in the future as well. So, Pamela, appreciate you again. Thank you very much, and uh, we're going to call it a day. All right. I appreciate you, Tim. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.